hello there. If you are a solo professional, an entrepreneur, you started your business because you love what you do, you have a passion for your topic, and and if you are somebody who is connected to me, I know very well that you are in all likelihood an introvert, and in all likelihood you have a, a mission, a calling that is on your heart, and that is part of why you started your own business. You naturally want to have the, you bought the dream, right? You want the freedom. You also want the flexibility in your schedule. You want to do the work that you love, that you are most passionate about. But I know you also are driven to change the world just a little bit, right? So you know that today, Technology has changed not only our lives and how we live in the world and act in the world, it's completely changed how business is done. It's supposedly made it easier for us to get our message out. It's supposedly made it easier for us to connect with our uh, potential clients to get our message out to them and and supposedly made it easier for us to generate revenue. But I know, and you know, that's not always the case. So there are so many options that are in front of us, and we then have to face, well, how do we use this technology to accomplish our, our business goals? That's what we're going to talk about today. My name's Winnie Anderson. I'm a positioning and content strategist. I work with introverted, mission-driven entrepreneurs who want to get their message out in a more powerful way, who want to make that big impact in the world, and would like to make some uh, some good money while they're doing it, right? So you want to make a big impact and, and that big revenue. But you are, in all likelihood, also a corporate escapee where you had people. You had the IT department. You had people you could call on when you got in a jam with something, and now you don't have anybody. And you may very well have worked in such a specialty where you had very limited experience training around the technology that you needed to have. Now you're chief cook and bottle washer. You're also the head of the IT department, the head of sales, and, and the chief doing officer, right? So this I know can lead to some fears and concerns around leveraging technology. In this special video series, I am facing your fears, helping you face your fears around a variety of issues that hold you back and keep you from getting your message out in a more powerful way. Last week, I had a conversation with my, one of my favorite online folks, Susie Gruber, and we talked about the fear of standing out and how that can be paralyzing. And in this week's conversation, I have an even bigger one of my favorite online people, the fabulous Susan Weeks, and I want to gush to you about her. So if you've joined me before, you know I have my monitor in front of me and I have my second monitor over here, which I really need to turn. To Did you hear that? Uh, yeah, that was not pretty. Uh, equipment everywhere just fell down and I hope I didn't hit my cat uh, anyway I know what you've also tried right you so you know you have to deal with this technology you have to learn it and use it you've probably followed a guru at least one and the problem with gurus is they always recommend a fire hose when what you really need is a squirt gun so they're telling you that you must have this big gigantic piece of technology so you're like all right well I guess I need it and then what in the heck am I going to do with it and I can't learn it so we're going to address that issue as well but let me tell you about the fabulous Sue, and I will also fill you in on what's going to happen the rest of this month so you can catch the rest of these sessions. So the fabulous Sue Weeks, I could gush about her for days. She is, she has a solid history in corporate life. She's worked for big companies like you have. She's worked for even bigger companies than I have. She's worked for Nissan. She's worked for other big companies where she has been enmeshed in the technology, even mainframe computers. So her experience ranges from being an employee in these big businesses to working as a, a freelancer, as a consultant and support person, to solo professionals 
and what I call micro firms, those super small businesses, partnerships that are trying to use technology to get their message out in the universe. So Sue has many strengths. One of her biggest is her ability to f deliver no nonsense, practical information that I know you understand. And she's able to present it in a way that you can actually learn it. And the reason for that is because she she's a trainer like me. She understands how people learn. She communicates effectively and breaks things down into these bite-sized chunks. She doesn't talk 9 million miles an hour, which, which I certainly do. So Sue is also the host of uh, the much-loved show, Stitchery Stories, because in addition to being a tech expert and a tech trainer, she is also a specialist in podcasting. So she helps you be more productive with technology, be more profitable with technology, and then get your message out using technology. And she's got this subspecialty in podcasting. So she's the host of this much-loved show, Stitchery Stories, it regularly ranks in the top 100 in Apple Podcasts. It's a great show, lots of fun to listen to, where Stitchers talk about their successes, their failures, and there's a lot there that relates to business owners. So whether you're a Stitcher or not, I think you'll get a lot out of it. The big thing is she launched the show with no list, no platform, and got it to be the top 100, and it's reviewed very well. It's a recommended show mentioned in magazines and, and all kinds of stuff. So she really is outstanding. One of the many things I love about her, and she's probably just dying because I'm gushing about her so much. One of the things I really love about her is this ability she has to get right to the point and really be, get focused and give you this practical, applicable information, no nonsense. She focuses on the right solution to your problem where the guru is just like, I don't know what they're trying to tell you to, that you need. And I also love that she is a dedicated single mom to her fabulous son, Ryan, so who is at some point going to be a, a ninja, right? So we're going to go ahead and bring Sue in and add her to the stream. Here she is. Can, can I hear you? I hope so. Can you hear me? I can. I can. I can hear you laughing. So did that make you massively uncomfortable? Oh, I'm English. Come on, Winnie. We can't possibly sit there and listen to all this. And now, of course, I won't be able to string two words together. <laughs> no, but we are going to forgive Sue because she's got a cold. So she's recovering. So she starts coughing, hacking. We're going to just excuse her and let her, uh, let her collect herself before we go on. I'm going to do just one more little commercial, and then we're going to dive into talking about overcoming the fear of technology. So first of all, Know that this replay is going to stay live for uh, up, I should say, until 9 o'clock a.m. Eastern Time. So if you're watching this on replay, you're watching this on replay. And if you're watching it anywhere else, some of what we've, we say may or may not be applicable, right, depending on when you're, you're viewing this and where you're viewing this recording. So if you know that you want to watch this again or even listen to the audio, or you know you can't get to it in that time frame, then I'm going to encourage you to go head over to the Courageous Entrepreneur Show's vault where this recording and the whole series of Face Your Fear is going to be stored. The Courageous Entrepreneur Show is my podcast, and the vault is where I keep all of the back catalog. So bonus material, seasons one through three, we're heading into season four, it's really a treasure trove of information and inspiration to help you move forward with courage, confidence, and clarity. So there's the, the final commercial. Let's dive in. So we know that tech is supposed to make our lives easier. Like I said, it's supposed to make help us sell our services, get our message out there, get more clients. And yes, that's true with a big but right, that it can be for some people really confusing, frustrating, and, and overwhelming. And there are three big areas that 
we are going to focus on and that we need to use technology on, right? And we know that, first of all, we could go on for days about this, right? <laughs> it's an absolute specialty. We'll try and not to. <laughs> all the subspecialties will really try to be respectful of your time and know that we've got, uh, we, we've got a million things to do. Sue's five hours ahead of me or four hours ahead of me anyway. So she's got to get... It's nearly wine o'clock here. <laughs> And as we know, it's been one of those weeks. So that's important. So we're going to focus on these three key areas. <laughs> one is you've got to be able to solve your own problems to a certain degree with technology or at least figure out what your problem is. Then you've got to learn the technology and then you've got to apply the technology. So we're going to touch on all of these issues, the fears that this stuff can bring up. And of course, Ask questions, make comments, let us know that you're here. And if you find this valuable, I hope you'll share it with other folks. So let's start with this whole issue of being able to recognize and deal with a problem that you're having. And, and again, this we could go on for hours about it. But one of the problems that I've seen and that people talk to me about is they can't believe I can solve some of my own problems. And I'm like, <laughs> really? That's special? I didn't know that was special. <laughs> so let's talk about, first of all, the fear of even dealing with technology in general. What are the kind of things that you have noticed about that or discovered with the people that you work with? Yeah, I think the, the main fear, it's as if something is going to break. It's the fear yeah. of, I think making a mistake, and when we put our old corporate head on, oh, we, we, we're we not allowed to make mistakes when we're getting paid a salary, are we? You know, we're right. there to be to be perfect, aren't we? Right. Um, and, and I think there's a, there's a lot of that comes from it. And one of the main things is, I think in general, people have a fear of something that they have no control over or they feel like they've got no control yeah. over it um it's this kind of black hole almost and in certain respects let's just deal with that bit technology these days is has although you may curse it it does have a very sophisticated let's call it an interface yeah, yeah. so you're not actually dealing with the machine you're not dealing with the the code you're not dealing with any of that so actually you don't need to know how it works in the background. You know, when you hop into your right. car and set off, do you, do you know how an engine works? Yeah, lots of people do know how an engine works. You don't need to know how to, to drive. So I, I think, and again, these things are all easily said than done, aren't they, Winnie? But you can, in some respects, distance yourself from, you can't, a lot of the stuff we have now, you, you can't break it. You can't, you know, if you're right. using an, an email platform or you're using a graphics creating tool you can't break it yeah you, you can't break it you're not going to yeah. break it and break it mailchimp for everybody or or canva for everybody you you might right. lose a document or lose a little graphic but it's not going to break so i think we can yeah. really distance ourselves from 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 yeah. that one I call think it, that, call it what it is. It's it's not it's not going to break. <laughs> yeah, I think that you've hit a couple of of really good points, and and of course I'm making some notes. So if you want the the notes, you can just use the magic symbol below and say notes. If we say anything that makes you go wow, use that magic sign and and share wow, and then share what that that fabulous thing was. I think that part of this is. Also, um, the f back to that corporate experience, we've spent decades there, so yeah, we've been <laughs> conditioned. It's the fear of being punished, right? R think yeah, about, yeah. let's just, yeah, let's just have so, yeah. a horror yeah. moment for a it's second. It's not the mistake, it's the punishment. Yeah. It's not, right, it's not the mistake, it's the punishment. So uh, we'll flash back for a moment, and I want you to think about what life was really like in your corporate residence or organizational life, wherever it was you lived. I grew up professionally at a time when, not that it was okay to make a mistake because nobody, of course, likes them, but I grew up and, and in organizations where I knew I wasn't going to be fired because of the mistake I made. I just never had that fear. 
And yeah, I made mistakes. I made some pretty good ones. But I also learned from those mistakes, was able to fix those mistakes and move forward. And I think this point that you raise about fear of the unknown, fear of not being able to control something, we're out of our element as as entrepreneurs, right? We we were employees, we took direction, we gave direction. We were the, the big fish in the small pond, the resident expert. And then we go out on our own, we're still the expert in our subject area, but we've got to use these tech tools to get that message out. And I think that's really the scary part. And then you're thinking, I'm going to be punished. Subconsciously, we're thinking that. Yeah, I mean, my background is my first job was, as you say, at Nissan. I started off as a, a mainframe computer programmer. So you can't possibly, at that level, know how this huge great machine works. You, you know your interface and you know the, con the the instructions that you need to make the logic work to make it do things. But, you know, and, and we, in some respects, were protected through layers of protocols and, and how you tested things. And it went from this environment to the other one, to here, to there. There was a whole raft of things that you had to do to test things. Right. I mean, ultimately for us, the big disaster was if something happened with a system which stopped the production line. And, you know, we're talking 30 years ago now. It was, I shan't say how much it is, but it or was, but it was, tens of thousands of pounds per minute if right. that production line stopped and if you're the one who made that ill-conceived yeah. idea and didn't and didn't go through the testing protocols boy did you know it now quite often we'd have you know I'd, you'd answer the phone there'd be somebody screeching and swearing at you down the phone about it but that then brought into well what do you do when there's a problem which we're, we're kind of right. talking around a bit so for me, I my environment has been through that. So right. I know now anything I do. And when I was working with banking systems, you cannot make money. You can't make mistakes in banking systems. The serious no. issues happen when we're doing with, when stocks and shares. How quickly that information can wreck a company or ruin an economy. Yeah. So moving forward now, for me and my conditioning, the stuff I'm working with now is frankly. It's a piece of cake. There's, 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 there's nobody screaming down the phone at me. There's, 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 there's no millions being lost per second. Um, so I'm in a different relationship with technology now. All this is like, wow, technology is my friend. It's, yeah. it's you yeah. know, so, so I'm now here to try and help people to relax and understand that it, we're doing something in our little online world here. Nobody's going to die a production line isn't going to stop. A factory is not going to stop. You're not, not going to get fired. We, you know, we're not going to get fired. So it, it, it's, it, it's, you're not going to get punished anymore. You're not going to be sacked. Right. You know, a link might have broken or an image you might you say you might just have wasted half an hour of your time. Right. Oh, oh dear. Right. Right. Uh, and I, you know, making notes as we talk, I, I'm that, you are. <laughs> that, that corporate standard, Right. I worked in human resources. Now, thankfully, I never worked in comp and benefits. Mm -hmm. I worked in areas of communication. I worked in staffing, training. Not that you could not make mistakes. Obviously, you certainly could. And they're, they had their own big implications if you made them. But when you think about it, people who work in comp and benefits, in payroll, in benefits administration, their standard of performance is perfection. Because no one wants, you know, you can get it 90% right handling benefit claims. No, you can't. Do you want to be in the 10% where the person made the mistake? No. So, yeah, we were conditioned that we must be perfect. We must be 100% all of the time. And this it's good enough concept can be really hard for us to accept and embrace and yes to remember nobody's going to kick our butt but us <laughs> yeah. you know if if you think about the gurus that we all follow i don't know about you sue but i'll bet every other day i get an email that is a correction of the email I got the day before. Oh, mm -hmm. that link was broken. Oh, the video didn't. Oh, I forgot the attachment. So we're comparing ourselves to these people we've put on this pedestal 
they're human too. And yes, they have yes. a team. They have a team, yes. And right. I think when we're talking about how you can get technology to help, then and a thing that I see missing quite a lot of, and, and, and I, I don't mean to sound awful here, but is the lack of testing. Yeah. It, we're even all in if a hurry. Even, we're, in a even, hurry. we're all in a hurry. Even if it's a, a, a run through to say, right. is that actually doing what we're doing? Have a, a check sheet or something, you know, right. right. Is the link attached? Is the, does the link go to the right place? Uh, right. You know, and you can sit there with, with whatever it is that you do. Once right. you've created it, then sounds really boring, but we used to create test plans. We spend weeks writing. Did some people, that's all they do. They're a tester. They right. write test plans. How, how different ways can we break something? Well, right. when we're creating, a, a, you know, and everyone goes on about how complicated these funnels are, aren't they? And it's, but actually, you've usually got a screen, a page, a link, a video, some text, a right. button. Right. Oh, let's get really fancy, a cart. Um, it, it, yeah. it's, it's, it's relatively straightforward. And I, and I don't mean to I say, I don't mean to sound awful, but you can sit down with, with you know what's being created and, and say, right, these are the pieces. Right start from the beginning and does this work does that work does the email go out and all of that can be tested right. without affecting anybody and without making you feel bad or foolish so right you know go back to this old old-fashioned thing of you know yes things are quite easy to develop but we, we can do a bit of testing to help ourselves as yeah. well yeah <laughs> so this speaks to a couple of things one is planning <clears throat> Right. So true, you know, complete disclosure. Sue and I had a, a we've had two conversations around today, what we were going to talk about, planning it out, that sort of thing. So we've we've done that. We also had a conversation because both of us are working on our our collective calendars our individual calendars, I should say. And yeah, you need to actually map that out. Too often we run by the seat of our pants. We don't take enough time to plan. So that is definitely a big part of it. And that issue of creating those processes and systems, that's not why you got into your business. I'm going to bet, right? There are experts out there. That that's what they do. That's not you, I'm going to guess. So, so, But that area of process creation, it's one of the things that I refer to as the four cornerstones of success because those processes help you work faster, they help you minimize errors, they help you get ready to eventually hand something off to someone else. Mm -hmm. So you're really increasing your own profitability by leveraging those, even though we know they're nobody's idea of a fun thing to create. Let's, let's talk a little bit about solving a tech problem and we're just going to hit the highlights so oh but before i go on one of the big things and we're going to come back to this point throughout the the conversation and but sue certainly just alluded to this it's what you're telling yourself hmm. right so many times people will tell both of us individually you know you're so calm you're so well what am i my house isn't on fire <laughs> Right. I OK, I dropped the, 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 the light got knocked off my desk. It didn't kill my cat. I mean, it just, you know, so you really want to keep these things in perspective and you want to start tuning into the story that you're telling yourself because it came from somewhere and it's fueling the emotion that you're feeling. So you whatever it is, you're going to figure it out. Right. Sue said you, nobody's going to fire you nobody's going to hunt you down right and you're you're not you can you can fix anything that's the way to and the worst that could happen you lost a document oh well we've all it's happened to all of us right so let's talk about this issue of solving tech problems because there's actually one i think is even figuring out what's the root of the problem is it the the, the hardware or the software well that that is a skill in itself but again i think just going back to what you said there winnie about um the story that's going on in your head then it, it's panic isn't it you something's ah it's not working panic and so your your, your brain and your body's trying to do that fight or flight thing you know it, it, it just right. you, you just want to run away at this point but no you can't because you are the it department and and nobody's going to come flapping down from the sky to rescue you so it's it's down to you so my first 
thing. So yeah, you've got the hardware or sof software side of things. But before any of that, it's take a step back and take a breath. Walk away, literally walk away. <laughs> Technology. Speaking of which, <laughs> we've lost the phone. I forgot to turn my phone down. So we'll turn off the phone <laughs> and uh, the joys of live TV. Um, right, what was I saying? Oh, yeah, so, so, so the thing is, literally take a step back. I know I'm laughing about, you know, you want to run away. Actually, right. you know what? Get off your chair. Go out of the room. Right. Go and, if you're English, go make yourself a cup of tea. Get a drink of water, <laughs> whatever. Yeah. Step outside if you can. Yeah. Um, because in that panic mode, you'll never solve anything. At least you seriously won't. You, your brain is not thinking in a logical way. Your brain is trying to get you out of that problem and that horrible issue. So right. make, make your brain feel better. Get up, move, and, and just take a breath. Five yeah. minutes, ten minutes. It's, again, we haven't got a production line zooming along in the background here with folks right. screaming at you because they're losing thousands and thousands every second you're okay. diddling around. So that, is, to me, is a really key one. Equipment. These days, it's usually a case of, is the plug actually properly in? And, and again, some of these things, we may just say, oh, come on, Sue, seriously? You're and you know what? Go check the plug. Yeah, I'm going to dive right I'm in. Telling you to go yeah. check the plug. I'm going to dive right in here because, again, this is triggering the emotion, right? The, the only person who makes you feel stupid is, is you, right? <laughs> so, yes, people can get exasperated. And, and that's their issue, but it's your issue about how you respond. So Sue is going to tell you to check the plug, but you know what? How many times have you shaken the plug and it's worked again, right? So so again, you want to just, you're not stupid. Nobody's acting like you're stupid. Technology is so infuriating. It's, it's like medical care though, right? First, do no harm. Start with topical pain relief before you actually take medicine, right? Use Ben Gay or whatever, you know, cream or whatever you put on. Um, so I'm sorry to interrupt, but that is a really big recognition. It happens. And I think when, in, in, again, in terms of that story that you're telling yourself, if somebody does come along who's trying to help you, and it be, you know, if it's somebody like me, then I will go into Mrs. Pedantic mode, Right. You're going to get a load of really pedantic questions from me as I try and help you troubleshoot really what the issue is. So forgive me for saying, well, has, has your cat knocked the plug out? Has your 15-year-old just nicked your doodah that you're looking for? Right. Right. Basic things like that, first of all. It's like when you go and ask, I don't know if there's any men listening, but you go and ask your, your partner, you know, where's so-and-so? Well, you get that, well, it's where you've left it. It's not here, and it's literally under the nose. It's what I call a man's look, you know. <laughs> Man tells you he hasn't. It's not there. You know it is. It just doesn't look properly. But right. it's that same thing. So if you can try and then just step back and think, well, okay, say if your screen's gone off, right? Well, can you hear your computer fan still going? Right, my computer's still going. Yes right. or no? I mean, you've probably got a problem with your screen. Has your cat pulled the plug out or as? Has the battery just gone in your mouth? So silly little things like that, first yep. of all. Just if, if you stop and stop panicking, you can listen and you can yep. hear if something's still going. Oh, the lights are still on in the in the kitchen, right? Well, I haven't lost. So it's, it's basic things like that. But then right. if it gets down to things like if your computer suddenly crashes or won't boot up, if it's not going to reboot and start try and start again on its own and it doesn't work, or if a message, you know, it, it, if it doesn't work once, it isn't going to work for the hundredth time you've tried it. It isn't, there's nothing going to magically start working again. It's, it's either it works or it doesn't work. So once it's crashed, it'll try and reboot. And beware for those, you know, the blue screen and, and, the, and the codes. What can be handy is, so it's up oh, and you miss them. So let it try again to reboot. But meanwhile or wait till you turn it on again, get your phone and take, be ready to take a picture of the screen on there. Brilliant. Because that can be really handy for the yep. computer guy in the town. We say, look, around going, oh, my computer do not work. Look, I managed to get this, you know, grab a picture on my phone of what the error was. So, you know, and if after three times it won't reboot, it ain't going to reboot anymore. All it's going to do is keep going round and round in a circle. Right. So just switch it off and 
call yeah. the computer guy yeah. hopefully that's, with a message because that's what i do i have no right. idea really what's going on in that machine i yeah. don't care that's yeah. somebody else's special job sorry i'm too hot now i'm just keep switching the heat no that's uh, believe me i empathize entirely <laughs> um that's really great advice and because people ask me you know well how did you get to this point first of all i got underneath the desk <laughs> right honest to god if there was a problem out the plug, yeah i had to get underneath the desk i had to see are the plugs all plugged in did I kick something? You know, I have my feet underneath the desk and then the cords right there. Back when my my office was in a different room in my other house back home in Jersey, that's what I would do sometimes is accidentally kick the stupid plug. So I finally moved it. I mean, that's that's the kind of stuff that you have to, one, be comfortable doing. So mm -hmm. if you recognize that you're not at that comfort level yet, then you need to, to find a person who is and you're going to you're going to pay in two ways one is your own time and two is the, is the money to the other person and like any professional they're who's trying to diagnose a problem they're going to want to know what you did so here's another way that you can start tuning into your own emotion and how you may be you know aggravating things <laughs> is I'm, I'm at, like we revert to the kids that we once were, right? I, I used to tell people when I would do, do management training and leadership training, I would tell people, look, you might think that you're some big shot director. You're just a big version of the kid you once were and you are haunted by that you're going to get in trouble, that somebody's going to yell at you, right? Mm -hmm. So you want to think about that and recognize that no one is going to yell at you, but they need to know what happened. And and they are not always going to be the best communicator, right? We know that tech folks sometimes are not good communicators. Let's be, and we're being nice. No, no, it's 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 true. It, so, the, those skills seem to be mutually exclusive in lots of people, but uh, right, right. But so we know that, don't we? So so don't don't be stroppy in the shop, right. or tut and groan because they're asking you questions. Or maybe they don't ask you enough questions. I don't and know. Don't it, I go into that pedantic question asking thing. Right. Don't don't tut at me either because I'm trying right. to. Don't feel threatened. <laughs> right. Don't feel threatened is my point. So if <laughs> if I because I've actually asked people back when I would try to help people with tech issues, what did you do? Nothing. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm not. Yes. <laughs> I'm not accusing you. I, I need to know the steps you took. So we can, you know, so I can figure out what what happened. How did you get to here? What did you do? You had to have done. So no, I know I didn't. I'm not honestly that little four year old. That's who's talking now, right? So that's where we talk about tuning into the story that you're telling yourself and recognize that if there is a button that's getting pushed, it's because there is a button that's there to be pushed. So yeah. there's no need to be afraid. We're genuinely trying to help you. Well, Sue is anyway. But she's going to need certain information or the tech person. You know, I, I just ha I have to go pick up one of my laptops. Yes, I have two uh, at the shop because I, I had reached my level of I can't figure this out. Right. So there's just understanding what your level of. I can't figure it out is you certainly know how to turn it on and you certainly know how to, to make a note of what the error message said, right? So one, one tip I can give you is keep a notepad that all you do is write computer stuff on. Yeah, that's a good point. So when you get an error message and it, it needs to be right next to you, or in my case, it's right next to on my desk, right at the end of my desk. So you grab that and you write that error message down. And then if, if you can't get it to do whatever it is that you're trying to do, now you have you can say, I don't understand what this is, but this is what I got. And as Sue will tell you, all you have to do then is Google that error message. <laughs> yeah, so there's, there's right. a couple more skills here that you're all going to roll your eyes at. If you're all yeah. expecting magic here, no. Right. Yeah. <laughs> this is magic. This is magic. Yeah, the ability to Google, right? So right. we've got this fabulous thing now, haven't we, called a search engine. Right. And 
most of these things, there'll be some wizard somewhere has written a or done it done a YouTube or, or written some articles, and, right. and there'll be several. So you'll be able to choose from the one that you understand the best and think is the best presented. But yeah, but if obviously if your computer's down, then you can do that on your phone. Most people now have got a smartphone, so you can you can Google on your phone as well. So yeah. don't, again, when the panic's gone away, oh right, oh, I can't do anything. My computer's broke. No, you, you've got your phone. You can try on there, or you might have a you know a tablet, an iPad, or something. But um, kind of go through those, but. Back to these kind of pedantic steps. So, yeah, writing some kind of error message down. Another thing that is really helpful to be able to do is, and this needs setting up ahead of time, is to have some way of knowing how to do a screen capture, a screen print. So there's a, a little thing called Jing. That's been around a million right. one years. Uh, there's various other things. You can just tap and it'll take a picture of you, just like you can do on your phone. Yeah. So that's always really handy as well. So if, if something's not working right or you can't, can't see, I've, when you say to yourself, I've, you're shouting, I've, I've typed that in, I've typed exactly right. that in. I can honestly guarantee most times when you're shouting at that computer to say you've typed that thing in, you've missed something out, right? right. My conditioning as a computer, mainframe computer programmer, a dot, you know, you'd call it a period, a full stop, a dot. That is so important. If you didn't have a dot in the right place, it's right. not the correct name. It's, again, it's, right. and it's so easy to, uh, um, in your panic, to assume, and you're going round yeah. in that loop. I've typed that in. I've done it. I've done it. I bet you're all laughing here, aren't you? But yeah. that's, that's what you do. Yeah. And the number of times when I've helped people to, this is back to pro, teaching people how to program and code, then – you know, I'd be sitting with a room. I, I, t I taught graduates at Morgan Stanley for a number of years, and it's it's like it's, it's, it's not working. This don't work. That don't work. Right, I'm going to stop. Same thing. I said, right, you talk me through what it is that we're looking at. And I used to call it the cardboard cutout syndrome. Right? If I'd have had a pound for every time this worked, so the person then they're all like, I'm doing it right. I'm doing it right. Oh, okay, let, let's have a look. So you'd get right start from the beginning, and you tell me what it is that we're looking at and you tell me talk me through this code and you tell me how what it's all about and, and they start talking and then they go ah it's there that's where my and they solve right. their own problems all right. of a sudden they go oh i've missed the dot out oh, oh, oh i spelled that wrong yeah yeah and so if you know when you're working for yourself you don't have that but you, you, you can imagine a cardboard cutout, though, can't you? Ooh, what have I done? You can imagine that cardboard cutout person. And, and, and so when you're sat there looking at a screen and, for example, uh, I recently tried to help somebody with some um, – trying to download some audio files. And I, there's some very clear, very specific instructions to work through. No, this doesn't work. This won't work. I'm stuck. I'm stuck. Okay. Can I have a screenshot, please, of the uh, file folder? Anyway, so then they disappear, and I never heard anything back for a couple of days. And then I could give them a prod, and then it's like, oh, I don't know how to do that. Well, okay, then, right, so do – but I could – when I finally got a – I said, take a picture with your phone, then, if you can't do that. Right. Finally got that. Well, they would made a mistake with the naming convention, and it did clearly say that these names had to match, and then it would all work. Right. Okay, it didn't. Right. So it's that pedanticness of – speak yeah. it out loud if something's not working it may sound it may sound silly and you may feel like a fool for doing it but hey we're all sat in our own office and nobody's listening is right. to sit there and say right out loud out loud and and there's something about saying it out loud i mean you're good at it's magic. Brains working things there is something magic about you yeah. start there telling yourself out loud and you, i can guarantee you'll go oh Right. Ex that's exactly right. When, when you're I, talking it through, in yeah. but when you're looking at it, uh-uh, uh-uh. It's when you in, talk. Yeah. When talk. I when when I was a training manager, I used to make my staff insane because I would make them when the, we were going to uh, launch a new program. I would make them do a demo of it for me for a couple of other people, and. I don't care how much you hate it. 
it's because what you have written and what you've planned, you know because you've trained as well. When you start trying to explain the instructions to an exercise, suddenly you know what you what you want to have happen, but we're listening to you and you're not making a lick of sense to us. So yes, there's something magical about when you have to say things out loud and also, it, and this is actually, this is studies have proven this, back to what your your the story you're telling yourself when you stop and you say out loud and talk yourself off of the panic ledge and you say now sue here's what's going to happen the brain does not realize that it's you who's talking yeah so that soothing voice using your name actually does help lower your stress level nobody's here the cat's not going to tell on you, so go ahead and start doing that. So I, I think what we've got here right now, and I'm going to share, and again, if you want the recording to this, uh, along with the list of resources that we're just spontaneously throwing out here, plus some additional ones that I'm sure we'll both think of after this is over, then you want to go to uh, it's couragepodcastfan.com and you want to sign up to get the vault. You'll get the recording and resources, plus you'll get all of the other back episodes of my podcast, The Courageous Entrepreneur Show. But I digress. And of course, questions, comments, we're here to, to answer them, even if you're watching this on replay, uh, until it goes in the vault, that is. So... Yeah, so really you want to soothe yourself. Go ahead, So yeah, There was one more thing before it falls out of my head. Yes. Um, quite often when we, we're in some of these screens where you've got a, a, drag, a drag and drop screen builder, they're, they're everywhere now, okay? Even if you're working in a little graphics package or if you're building a landing page or you're in an email marketing platform, they're all drag and drop. Now, they've got a lot better over the years. but they can still get themselves in a bit of a knot. And that happens when you're constantly changing something. Tweak it, change it, tweak it, change it. And you just, all the time. First of all, and again, I'm going to sound like Mrs. Pedant. Please remember where the save button is, right? Okay. And the back button and the save button are your friends here. Well, secondly, right, they are. <laughs> and basically, you were all expecting magic. You've got this. Um, but secondly, the difficulty with, again, people, I can't do these. I, I'm so, I'm, I'm scared of technology. No, what that is, is a, is a lack of preparation. So what I always do, and when I was doing a lot of work for people, um, helping them set landing pages and, and so on up, but anything really where you've got to put some creative content in some boxes on the screen, what, what I do and what I always advise people to do is first of all g just go in and bring it up and look look at where you need to put a picture where you need to put some words or what your choices are don't do anything don't try and create anything but just just go and look right and then you think right okay I can see where some of these little boxes I can drag out I get an idea and then go away and get a pen and paper and and, and kind of draft it out draw it out so you can look at it or if, if you're doing them um, you can do something where you can do like a little diagram i usually have some lying around but a uh, little add some little hand drawn diagrams which are a bit of a hoot but you can see what your process is going to be but even if it's just a landing page or a sign up form or something like that get an idea and then go away and just kind of draw it out and that's helping your brain process as well and then when you're starting to create the words put it in a basic text document not a word document uh, you know a dot txt out your notepad something like that right. it has no formatting characters okay type in what it is that you're going to do in there right does it all work and then when you and get your image all ready and done and that might take you half an hour or you might have one that somebody's done right. for you but get all your assets together then you can go back into that page and create it right. much quickly much much more quickly and um more accurate and and, and therefore you're gonna have less problems yeah and you're gonna see a mo much more visual thing so you you're then not changing it constantly and it's right. not going to get itself because making amendments is difficult because it's having to take stuff away and add things in and work out you know 
right. in the code in the background it's more difficult to make an amendment than just add something or it take is. it away so that's something that i was always strongly encouraged brilliant and again it just sounds stupid but it really does work and if no. it's pasting from a .txt file a plain text file then you're not getting the hidden characters that come in when you try and paste something out of a word document or a, a google docs or something they've got hidden formatting characters they can really screw up a screen builder because the code isn't expecting these random characters it'll make it do an yeah. extra line that you how, how much time have we all wasted in our life trying to either make it do an extra line or take that damn extra line away yeah we've all yeah. done it and, and it's usually a hidden you, we can't see that character brilliant so that's, and yeah. top, top top technology tip from super <laughs> and it absolutely is and i'm just going to reinforce it and and give you one more tip and then we're going to talk about uh the learning part and <laughs> that is <laughs> You know, don't think that Sue and I never run into any kind of tech problem ever, right? I, I think I shared with, with, I know I shared with Sue, but with other people too. My cat, my plugs are all in a power strip and my cat lays on my router. Don't get me started. So I didn't realize it because you don't hear it, right? When you're working, you're concentrating. She turned, she stepped on the power button, turned it right off. All, everything went down, right? And And it was up to me to figure out, she stepped on the power button. But then the other piece is this issue about Word. So I know people talk to me like I'm some kind of tech wizard. I was doing my podcast. I don't think I ever shared this with you. I was doing my podcast last week and uh, or two weeks ago, whatever. And the I got a, a broken feed, which meant that there was a problem with my podcast. It would, was not going to go out to the places that it needed to go to, right? And I could not figure it out I knew the answer was right in front of my face but you sometimes you just can't see it right and at that point I'm not going to kill myself I'm just going to ask for support right which is why you pay for a hosting provider yeah, the thing yeah, yeah. So, the, now you know I know better than this but I was in a hurry <laughs> and this is me all over right I was in a hurry to get my episode done I had forgotten something I'm in a rush and as soon as I got the email back from tech support, I'm like, yeah, I, I know I did this. Exactly. I had been, in, I had a Word document and I had a text document and I had added some extra copy to the Word document that I didn't copy and paste into the text document mm -hmm. before I put it into the, the podcast media area. That's it. That's all it took because of those hidden those hidden characters so if you did not know because it took me a while to realize that word had that then now you've learned something that you really want to work with the notepad function or if you're in a mac whatever uh but you want to to keep that plain text plain that clean text, text file yeah, it just awesome. really yeah just awesome. such a great great help so if you're looking to you know this is a commitment for yourself as you end this year and move into the next year or move from quarter to quarter you want to tighten up your ability to deal with with tech one is start doing start having fun so yes listening to the story and tell and saying nice things to yourself but also do some fun things like play some games because when you play games, it stretches your brain, right? How do, how do kids learn? How do babies learn? They learn through play. So there are games that you can play that help you with your problem solving. There, there are games you can play that help you with your visual acuity. So give yourself a reward. Set the timer, right? Sue knows I always have a timer right there, which is, is right behind me. Use the one on your phone. Give yourself a 15-minute block, and you're going to play some games, and you're exercising your brain. So, so use those, those kind of tips to start building your confidence, but really it's that story that you tell yourself. Yeah, so the game, the game playing thing, you know, again, people are thinking, what the hell are you going on about? That's yeah. the kind of corporate job I had, full of developers. I was a trainer at that point, but we were all working on complex financial systems, okay? Intense concentration, intense accuracy. Yeah. So for a break, you know, we need to break and give our eyes a rest, etc. What did, and, and again, it's a male-dominated environment, so it was mostly guys in the office, what did they do for their break? 
they all had a network game on the go. It was called Doom at the time, I think, but the newer yes. version. Yes. It was like running through dungeons, shooting each other. And so you'd be walking through the office, and all of a sudden there'd be folks going, I, 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 I won't use the language, but I've got, I've got you, oh, you've killed me. You know, and you could see them all like, oh, hang on a minute. You know, you, yeah. these professional programmers here, what, what's going on? But that was the way in which they, and yeah, it does help. The decompressed didn't do their eyesight any good like but still but it helped them decompress yeah. and also your brain is then doing something else and if you've got some logic problem that you're trying to sort out let your brain do its job right. in the background while you fiddle around playing a game so exactly. you know if you used to go well, people are being paid to do this well there's a reason why that's right allowed to do this so yeah, yeah. again it's that, that, yeah you know and, it's, and it's real yeah. life and this is how real people solve real technology problems bits of exactly. paper play games and, talk and play to games. yourself <laughs> and, and get outside and as as sue said take a break because when i reach when i nothing good happens when our emotions begin to get you away from us round and round and round that same that's circle right. that's all that's you're right. ever going to do just stop break the cycle go, go outside away, right yourself come back and yeah i'm i'm fortunate back. that i can you know two blocks over is the river I'll take a walk over and just stare at the, the mighty Niagara. I, I will even, you know, play with the cats. There's a, lots of things that you can do to just, it, it's an interrupt, interrupt your pattern. Play with the cats, go for a walk. I, I'll walk out into my garden and, and watch the squirrels. And, and But the point is to give yourself an emotional break and give your brain that break, and then you can come back and like anything, any other problem, you're going to be able to do it with a fresh mind. So let's let's also then touch on the fear of learning tech and using tech, and we want to keep a, a, an eye on our time. And and, and 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 if I have to bring Sue back, we'll just have to have Sue come back so we can chat some more. But let's let's talk about the issue of the fear of learning the tech because that's probably. You know, you can't use it until you actually learn it. So let's talk about that. For me, yeah. you know, and you and I both were fortunate that we started learning technology and computers with a C prompt. I mean, we, we you know, we got those, those computers. I remember when it was a big deal when we could send email because we had a local area network, a LAN, right? How exciting it was that I could just message somebody and I didn't have to get up and go walk 10 feet and, and send their message, right? So, so you, we've, we've actually been doing this for a long time and seen the different iterations. So yeah. one of the things to remember is for most of us, most of you, you were probably working with Word, Excel, right, email. You had limited use of the technology that you needed to actually run the whole business. Yeah. So, you know, you had the marketing department was into the marketing database and they were into the marketing, the email system and all of that. So now you've gone from you're used to looking at just Word, Excel, email, Outlook, or whatever, and maybe, maybe you had a project tool that you used, right? Now you've got to look at all of these different platforms, and it can be confusing. Would you say that's true? Yes, I think we have a confusion of choice now. We don't just have one thing right. that we can do right. that job with. We've got 2,200 right. things that we can do that same job with. And um, they can be differentiated by price, by complexity. Some are only suitable for an organization. Others right. are suitable for a team. Others are suitable for you or you and one person. So, right. you know, we, that's a whole other issue is selecting technology. But learning it as well is typically things that are paid. You get more support to help you and the resources are better. But I will say, and this is yeah. me on my hobby horse at this one, is even a lot of the mainstream, popular um, software platforms, so like some of the email marketing or some of the project management or client, whatever, it doesn't matter what it is, invariably the way in which that information is presented to help you learn isn't, hasn't been designed to help you learn. Now, this may sound stupid, so this is something that it dawned on me relatively recently as well when I thought, well, wh why is it that I look at these things in a different way? And when I've looked at uh, trying to learn something from the help of these platforms, what I've realized is 
and so therefore don't all be beating yourselves up why you can't learn from these things is that a help file a two minute help file on you know how to how to upload this thing or how to change that thing that's what that little two minute does if you're looking for an overview of how do you use this thing for your business? What's going to be the best things to serve clients with? You know, what to actually how are you going to use it to do its job to earn you money? They, they, they don't create help to do that. Right. So quite often you've got to look outside of those platforms for well, right. somebody like me who who's interpreted the platform in a way with with a bigger picture. Um and and it took me ages to recognize that that's the issue there. And so, again, people are beating themselves up. I can't learn this. I don't know what to do. Well, that's because it's, it's very not rarely, it's not you. It's very rarely is that that overview given. And if it's a free right. tool, you, you aren't going to learn very much from there because what incentive have they got to right. provide a lot? Because it takes a lot of time and effort to create training materials. It does. And if you've got a free level for something, that's why you don't get the personal support right, and that's right. why the training it's help and not training and those two are different things Does oh that my gosh oh like my <laughs> gosh that alone uh, 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 oh my god help and tra and training are absolute that is probably like that's a, a million dollar statement right there help and training are two entirely different things and i think the other key thing is that these great tools and and yes technology really is magical it is so i mean imagine sue and i have sue's one of my my longest i won't say oldest my longest <laughs> online friends and I, I, she's in the uk so just the fact that we could find each other and we've been able to over the years develop this great friendship how do we do it because of technology because we were both learning the same tools we took a test. I failed. She passed. Uh, <laughs> but also, we've then been able to, to stay connected and build this great relationship. That's the joy of technology. I have clients that are across the country. I've had clients in other other countries. Yeah, never world. would have, have had been able to do that. So technology really is this fabulous thing. But let's face it. It's been invented by techie people who think a certain way. We don't all think the same way. So when you're trying to learn something, remember also that teaching is both art and science. Mm -hmm. And and mm -hmm. there are plenty of people out there who try to teach you whether it's a tool they invented, a, a, a process they came up with, or any other solution. They might be subject matter experts, but I don't know about you, Sue. I used to have to work with subject matter experts at Showboat, the casino that I worked at, and I would have to help them create a training program and teach it. Bless their hearts. They were experts at what they did, that tech thing or yeah. finance thing, but they were not experts at communicating it. And, and, and something. we have to remember that. Yeah, no, I was saying it's something that when you're looking at trying to learn something, Yes, the first point of call is the help with the tool, but don't be surprised that what you're going to get is help and not training. And you right. may need to cast your net a bit wider, back to Googling again, or yeah. searching, other search engines are available. Um, it's, it's, it's back to that right. to then find, well, what other resources are there out there? And yes, you may well have to pay for them, which is painful when you've already paid for this. Uh, well, it may be. Right. You may be paying for a tool or you may not be, but... Um, it's it's worth therefore having a look to see what resources there are there because again you'll get a range of people some of whom maybe they you know they may have written the damn thing they may be really expert in it but training is not their superpower and explaining is not their superpower um, and people will present things in a different way some will just literally talk through what's on the screen others will. Again, if you're trying to apply, you want to learn this thing to be able to apply it to your business, you don't want to be told the obvious. This this pressing save saves it. And, oh, edit. That you're going to edit with there. Well, thank you. Yes, I could have read that myself. What you really want to know is the circumstances upon which the document you've created or saved or the landing page you've saved or edited. What, you know, how are you going to move forward with it? So casting your net a bit wider to 
give yourself a good chance of learning um, might mean looking outside of that particular right. tool to find some help. Yeah. Um, Forums are great. Forums, forums yes. user, group, yeah. re user groups, and again, searching for them, right? Uh, Microsoft Take Office user group or whatever. You don't look at the first answer that you see either. You right. you do need, I'm sorry again, sound pedantic. Please look at all, all the answers right. and you'll get a trend. And when you spotted the right. trend, that's the answer. Um, right. And But again, don't take each one. And I know this is hard, isn't it? Don't take them as gospel. You, you kind of have to. Right. But, yeah, you can kind of tell sometimes by the quality of the information you've been provided, by the quality yeah. and the way in which it's been presented. I think this also gets back to something that we've been talking about and, and that panicky, I'm in a hurry kind of thing, the, the not planning well, because when we're looking for a solution and we're in the market for, whether it's an email service provider or I want something to create uh, images that I can use in my social media posting or that sort of thing, Naturally, we feel that we don't know. We're a poor judge of what should be used, so we look to others, right? That's standard group dynamic and, and how, how, how humans function. So the tendency then is to, to look at some guru and, and see that, well, they use X, so I need to use X too. Remember, so I know it is, it's terrible, but I've done it, right? We've all made this mistake. We all so, have. We all have. So you, one thing you want to really do, and, and so many of us, again, have said, I'll do this and then not done it, and I've been there, it's the um, you, taking advantage of the free trial period. Mm -hmm and really kicking the tires, trying to do things, and because the quality of help and training should be part of your overall decision, do I want to actually yes. own this tool? Will I really be able to get my money's worth? And I'll just give you an example, because at this point, I'm, I'm coming up on a, a time period when I'm, s some things are going to come up for renewal. Right. So now's the decision. Am I going to renew this or not? Right. We all Me have too. that yeah, yeah. every month, every quarter, whatever. Yeah. So one of the things that I have this, I have this love hate relationship with Word, WordPress, it's mostly hate, actually. Um, <laughs> but I, I and that's why I pay maybe more money than the average person would. I pay for a subscription to I, I use Thrive Themes. And mm -hmm. one of the biggest reasons and there are other places out there, right? There's um, iThemes, yeah. Thrive Themes, there's Theme Forest, it's there's lot, all these yeah. different places, right? One of the reasons why I pay for it is because of the quality of forum that they have combined with support. So I can post a question yeah. in there, I can search, right? People tag, that's the other thing you want to learn how to, how to use the forum, be a good forum participant, put tags, on your question, that sort of thing. So I can search, I can search for answers, post the question if my question is truly not answered or my experience is different. And Thrive Themes, sometimes they'll actually just go, oh, just give us your login and we'll go in and we'll fix it, right? That's what I want you to do. To me, that is worth the money I pay yeah. on an annual basis yeah. because I don't have to feel angst. I know that I've got those people and that's part of, again, this is, you know, so many gurus try to leverage your emotions to get you to make a purchase quickly. Yeah, yeah. A good business decision is looking at expenses and revenue and not that you don't have to spend money to make money. We know you have to do that sometimes, but you want to make sure that you're buying a tool that you know is going to work for you. So if you ever feel pressured, that should be a signal to you mm. that, you know what, this isn't right for me right now. Yeah, because I, I, I shouldn't wrote feel a pressured. post about that the other day. You know, if you're getting that, step away and leave right. it. Right. You know, don't let the fear of missing out. Oh, ooh, ooh, there's a special offer. That special offer is going to be back in three months' time. Just don't worry about it. It doesn't right. matter what they say. It'll be back because right. they want to sell more of that thing. But do not ever feel guilt and pressure. All this rubbish about, oh, get your credit card out and, it, you know, just do anything you can to join this program. No, no, no because no. most times if you're in that situation, 
your, your revenue generation is maybe not as strong as it should be. Therefore, you don't need that damn tool. What you need to do is right. like, you know, as, as make we, sales. You part and make sales, build an audience, get your message sorted. Nail your all message, exactly. That, all the things that Winnie talks about right. is people f f gloss over because they think, oh, I've got my credit card out. I bought that thing. Phew. And it's that um, right. pleasure, isn't it, of having bought something. And then it sits on the shelf or gathers dust or you don't even sign into it. Right. Please, please, please just step away because yeah. then they're only interested in selling another unit of that thing, not interested in you. Right. Um, you know, and I'm, I'm not even going to say sorry because I'm English, aren't I? But, you know, it, 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 it's yeah. true. It is true. So please, yeah, please don't ever get yourself in debt to buy some program or some software. Right. You, you don't need it. Right. There's yeah. something smaller and more suitable for your position. You're not in the position that that guru is. That's their reality. Right. It's not yours. Yeah. And spending all that money isn't isn't going right. to isn't going to help. So so yeah. think of it this way. <coughs> yes, resist that if you don't buy in the next fifteen minutes. Here, they're just these are the same ploys that infomercials use. Right. Yeah. It's not it's not yeah. going to happen. Uh, but uh, you know, think about your uh, think about it in terms of okay. If I was back in my office, I was a manager. I was a director. I was a, an assistant executive director. If I wanted to make a purchase, I had to make a business case, right? <laughs> you we didn't know, just decide in two minutes to get your credit card. Right? I, I mean, at one point, I could, yeah, please don't. And we know that you know your boss is a jerk. We uh, then at some point you're the boss. So, but no matter what, there was there was an amount of money that I could spend without approval, right? And then. Above that amount of money, you you had to make a business case. Here's why I want this thing, and here's the the return on investment that that's going to give me. So you just really, if somebody is really playing that emotional card, and and bonuses are great, right? Especially <laughs> online, people will often waive this great bonus, and you're thinking, you know what? I want the bonus. I want it more than the thing. <laughs> than the thing, and that's what that's that. <laughs> what Yes. They're taught that to offer a bonus that's that's sexier than the thing because that will incent people to buy. So you just want to think about, okay, can I make a good business case in my head for this? And if not, as Sue says, the chances are really good if that bonus was that effective, they're going to offer that same bonus in the next quarter when they when this offer happens again. And you know what? So in that case, just make a little note in your calendar. In your planner, keep an eye out for this thing. But awesome because I really want it. And and I know I have confidence, but I need to, you know, have this revenue or whatever. So you just want to really you're running a business here. Treat yourself like the professional you you are and, and you were once were in corporate life. Make that business case and and that's how you make the decision there. So we're going to just wrap things up. We've gone over a little bit of time. Let's just think about, we've, in my opinion, you know, between Sue and I, we've given you some really good, useful tips, right, to, to reduce this fear. I'm going to just share my five, minute, five seconds of, of what I think is really at the root here. And then, Sue, you can dive in as well, and then we'll wrap things up. But I think that really what our fear of technology gets back to is a story that we're telling ourselves. It's a fear that we have from our past. Fear, in my opinion, is a memory. It, it's something that is being triggered in us. We're af afraid. Sue gave some great examples. Fear of the unknown. Fear of something we can't control. Fear of being punished. It's not the technology. Like, your computer's not going to leap off your desk and bite you, right? It's... It's something which is an emotion that's attached to this technology. So that's what you really want to get to the root of, that underlying fear. And more than anything else, tell yourself a positive story. I'm going to figure this out. I need a break. Or, you know what, it, what often I will tell clients is that's a complicated way of doing it. Let's, let's find the simpler way. Of doing it yes. lower stress but again it starts with being calm telling yourself a good story and looking at how your own planning has fueled this feeling of panic yes. so that's just my two cents so so what what kind of, of tips can you give about the the 
actual application of the technology, the use of the technology that can help us kind of bring this all home? Again, it, it, it sounds really dreadful to say. <laughs> Cats going in now. Yeah. It's really dreadful to say, but if there are instructions or there's a user guide or as the start here, please start there. Yeah. Please follow it. And again, right. Read it, read it out to yourself. The, the number of times I've had people say, oh, my audio on my podcast is awful. Well, what mic are you using? Oh, well, this one, oh, that's a perfectly good mic. You shouldn't have any problems with that. Ah, well, and then you find out actually that, because some of them, they do have to be used in the correct way, and you do need to read the instructions. So right. a good a good mic used in the wrong way is going to have as awful audio as a bad mic. Right. So, again, is this nothing magic here and and I, and I and i am aware of the fair that it must sound like really boring and old-fashioned but no you, you, the instructions are there because otherwise what's the next step you get in touch with somebody on the help or a forum and then as you say it's like don't yeah damn, I right. it. yeah so and, this uh, so i think this speaks to to understanding confidence isn't how it? you learn yeah, yeah. But it, it also speaks <laughs> to understanding how you learn because so many of us there, you know, there's no actual hard evidence that each of us has a different learning style, but it makes sense, doesn't it? Some mm. of us are just more hands-on than others. So if you know that your natural inclination is to just plug something in and start trying to figure it out, then that's okay. But when it starts not working, remember, oh, I just kind of dove dove in. Let me go back. When in doubt, read the manual, right? There's that old joke. Yeah, so, yeah. Yeah, yeah, All right, yeah. Back to you. yeah. Yeah. So no. Yeah, so that that's that's kind of the main yeah. thing. And and you know that that word about confidence is that actually you know a million times more than what you really think you do. Um. And 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 if to, in all honesty you are you've gone through the instructions or the manual and and you're still really struggling, then maybe that is the time to say, do you know what? I need to reach out and get some help from somebody to either do it. Or, or teach me it, do a sheet, a screen share, because that can be so much quicker to spend an hour with somebody where they're telling you, and kind of let's do it together, it's than it. spending a day pulling your hair out and it still doesn't work. Or you're not right. using it in the best way. And so every time you use it in, a, in, a, in the way that you've kind of developed and made up, whereas actually there's a far quicker way of doing something, you're wasting time over and over and over again. So it's right. like, when do you draw the line between giving something a try because you're the IT department in your office and then just saying, do you know what, back to that business case again, Winnie, do you know what, I, I don't need to really burrow my way through all of this. If I spend an hour with somebody who's, you know, an, an expert in this, my problem's solved and I can move on to actually doing what I want to do and earn some revenue. So that's my kind of final Brilliant. thing. On Brilliant. That. Out, outstanding information. This has been great fun. I hope it's been of value. And, and because our goal here really is to truly empower you. I know that word gets thrown, allowed, yeah, uh, thrown yeah. around a lot. But it's to help you have the courage, confidence, clarity that you need and, and trust in yourself. That, that you're going to be able to do this it, and, and always to start out simply and know that you're going to grow. The only way you can learn is to actually get your hands dirty and to get in there and get going. And there's nobody's going to fire you and you can't break anything. So dive in. So let's just tie this up again. I've been here with my fabulous friend, Susan Weeks, who is a, a, an expert, a tech trainer, a tech mentor. She is um, a, a specialist in podcast production, but she is in the process of really formally packaging the knowledge that she has about so many apps and tools. You definitely want to follow her because I know she's going to be releasing some things pretty soon that is going to be, I'm, I'm signing up. So you want to definitely connect with her. Uh, if you want to uh, friend her, follow her, I will include links to her pages in the comment area so you can connect with her. Uh, you know, if, you, if this has been great for you and you're going to want to refer back to it, you want the, to, to catch the, the replay, you want to make sure that you sign up for Courage Podcast. You become a fan of my show, The Courageous Entrepreneur, and do that at couragepodcastfan.com. That's going to get you access to the vault, all the back episodes, all the bonus material. All of this is how-to information. 
And you're going to get the whole series of Face Your Fear, which is going to be about four, three or four videos that are going to talk about these core issues that we all need to address. And all with the intent to, to really help you have the courage to, to get your message out, impact the world, make a great income, and uh, profit from your expertise, right? So thanks so much for joining me, Sue. It's been always great chatting with you. And uh, I do we, will, <laughs> we will catch up with you guys soon. Obviously, I have to go take care of Posey. So uh, <laughs> bye for now. Bye, everybody. Cheers.